Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. Now I might be smiling on the outside, but inside I am just so upset. Uh, literally this last weekend, my internet speed was under one megabit, in fact under half a megabit a second. And then on Monday, it was up to peaking at sort of 40 megabits a second, average of around 28 megabits a second. So how come on Sunday I have terrible internet and on Monday I have good internet? Well, if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Now we all connect to the internet in different ways. For example, if you're using your smartphone, whether that's Android or iOS, you'll be connecting to your telecommunications provider, to your phone company, and they'll be offering you a 4G or a 5G service. You may be connecting on Wi-Fi, so maybe in your house you've got a Wi-Fi router, you're connecting to that, and then that in itself is then connecting uh, over a fiber optic connection, ADSL, cable modem, whatever it is that you have in your area. And then any PCs you have may be using a wired connection again to that same a router and then again that goes over some kind of line, some kind of physical line. So you've got wired and wireless. And of course, if you're in a coffee shop or some other area like that, then you may be using Wi-Fi, but not your Wi-Fi, but the Wi-Fi that the, the shop or the restaurant or the shopping center provides. And again, they've probably got some kind of wired connection. So it's wired and wired less. Now, the test that I did over the weekend was for wireless using my uh, 4G connection from my telecommunications provider. And the thing is, is I live in a tourist area. And that means that during the summer, the number of people in the area goes up. And then during the winter, it goes down. Around Christmas and New Year's, it goes back up again. And then after that, it goes down and so on. So you have this fluctuation of people. Now, people bring smartphones with them. And so as they bring their smartphones, they're in their pockets, in their bags, whatever. You've now got thousands and thousands of more people using their smartphones in the same area that you're using your smartphone, or in this case, that I'm using my smartphone. And some of them, they'll just be in their bags and they'll be receiving, you know, WhatsApp messages, Telegram messages, emails, whatever it is that they're doing. And some people will actually be using them. They'll be watching YouTube videos. They'll be downloading things, whatever. But the point is this. When you have an antenna, when you have a cell tower, it has a certain capacity. It can deal with a certain amount of traffic. So that's traffic in terms of the people and in terms of the amount of data that flows. And when those levels start to get to the threshold, then everything starts to collapse in terms of the overall connectivity. So this weekend, what actually happened is there was uh, an event here in the town that I live in and thousands and thousands of people came from all over the place and they're still, and they're using the same cell tower that I use. So when I was looking at my smartphone, when I tried to do anything, web pages wouldn't open, messages weren't coming in very quickly, I couldn't look at social media, it was a disaster. And when I did a speed test, you saw how low that was there, under uh, a megabit, under half a megabit a second. And then on Monday, they'd all gone. They'd all gone back to their houses, to wherever they live, doing whatever they're doing, and we were back to normal, and my internet speed shot up uh, you know, much, much higher. So what is the lesson to be learned here? One is, is that cell towers have a capacity and that the telecommunication providers need to offer the capacity that's uh, appropriate for that thing. So if you're in a big city with millions of people, that's gonna be very different if you're in a rural village, we you know just a few hundred, even thousand people in it. So very, very different setups. And this particular area where I live, it's okay most of the year, but when you get in the summer, our internet has been pretty bad all, all year round, all summer round. I mean, it's been, it's been awful at times. We've been kind of pulling out our hair. And then when a big event happens, it's worse. Now, why is that here? Because here in this house, I don't actually have fiber optic to my house and have a cable connection here to my house. That's just to do with a geographical thing. Uh, I do have a, a copper twisted pair as in a telephone line, and that does give me ADSL uh, at 10 megabits a second. However, there was an accident in the street just down here and someone cut through the entire cable for all the telephones. So as I glance over my modem actually over there, as I record this video, the lights are all just red because it's not got any connection. So these last few uh, weeks, in fact, now this, this, derang this uh, problem has been around for quite a while. They haven't replaced the big cable. Uh, we've been relying on 4G internet. So we've got 4G internet on our phones, we've got 4G in a router with a SIM card in it, trying to give us some kind of internet access during this downtime. And at the weekend, it was 
terrible. So if you are wondering sometimes why your 4G is not working very well, look around you. Are you surrounded by lots and lots of people? Have they all got their phones out as well? If you're thinking of using 4G as a way of bringing internet into your house, then do be aware that if you live in an area where the population fluctuates, then the service is going to fluctuate as well. Okay, really that was just a little story of what happened to me this weekend. And I thought well, maybe sometimes that happens to you. I did mention it to somebody and they said, oh, I didn't even think about that. So that's why I thought that if I shared it with you, now technically there's nothing I can do about it. I've tried all the major telecommunications providers here and they all suffer from the same problem. They all have one you know, tower and then they all cope with the normal population. When the population goes up, there's nothing they can do about it. So it isn't about my particular uh, service provider, which is why I blurred out the name of the service provider there because I didn't want to shame them. It's actually a practical problem in this area for everybody. Okay, so that was that. So there you go. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, stick around by subscribing to the channel. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. I also have a monthly newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in my address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.